Hello. In today's session, we're going to talk about sex. Yes, sex. And I know it's uh, taboo normally to speak about sex in a ministerial aspect, but sex is part of real life. And while we're waiting for a husband, we need to understand what part sex plays in this weight and in the in the development of a real substantial marriage. So first we're going to acknowledge, yes, we understand that scripture says that we should be a virgin at the time of marriage. But let's be 100% transparent here. Most women are not. Especially those that are going into their second or third or more marriage. Those that may have um, experienced sexual abuse as a child. Those who may have became curious early and maybe um, adventured out. In today's society, the majority of the women going into marriage are not going in as virgins. I am not saying that from a judgmental standpoint. I am not even approaching it from that angle because none of us are perfect. I just want us to understand that we're, it's not like the days of old. There are still some women waiting till they're married, but the statistics are now quite the opposite. There are more going in, uh, not a virgin anymore, than there are going in. So let's talk about what happens when we do lose our virginity before we're married. We do have um, sex, we'll say randomly, with someone we thought we loved, we thought we were going to marry, whatever the situation was. When we look at sex, realistically, we know that in the beginning of time, there was no paperwork, there was no contracts. Contracts were an exchange of blood, the cutting up the finger, the cutting up the palm. And in the descriptions of marriage, the breaking of the hymen during the, in the marriage bed. Contracts were solidified by blood. So the marital contract was also solidified by blood. Um, scientifically speaking, we know that semen contains blood. The ejaculation of the man inputs his being into you. Whether you get pregnant or not, this sperm is a living thing. It contains blood, uh, DNA, genetics, and this is inside of you. You have formed this will say, for lack of better words, blood contract. But we never think about part of the issue with us finding or being found by a husband may be because we're carrying around what appears to be our husband. We have formed this covenant, we have formed this blood contract, we are carrying on to whether we're still in an actual relationship or not, we're still, still contractually married to the person that we have already had sex with. Have we prayed for release? Have we released ourselves from this? A lot of times we have not. And Part of the reason that it is difficult for the husband to find us is because we're emotionally and mentally bound to another man. It is hard to deal with the new man when you're still carried around the old one, when you're still wondering what it would have been like if it had worked when you're still picking up the phone and calling him or picking up the phone and answering his calls, having 
uh, rendezvous, for lack of better words. It is hard to attach to the new when you're still holding on to the old. So we want to take a real close look at our past, our situations, and we need to set free the people from our past. We need to set free ourselves from the people of our past. We need to cancel those old contracts. You may be saying, well, not sure what you're talking about. When we go before the Father, the Father already knows our sin. But a lot of times we've been taught, we go, we thank him, we ask for something, we pray on our armor, we go about our business. We're not really taught to have a conversation. We forget that the Most High is our Father. He's omnificent and omnipresent, so he's already knows what we've done, what we've thought. He already knows all this. But he's waiting for us to come to him and talk to him about it. Forgive me for the mistake I've made. Help me make better decisions. Release me from the ties that bind me. Cancel those incorrect contracts. And so we need to really think about this as we're considering our waiting for a husband. While we're on this journey, while we're on this path, while we're learning to wait, while we're learning to observe, to be still and know that he is Yahuwah. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, and there is nothing he cannot do. So he already knows what we need. Not necessarily, he knows what we want. Not necessarily does he really care about that. He knows what we need. But he also knows if he gives it to us right now, while we're still mentally and emotionally bound, we're not going to handle it the way we should. So the second thing I want to touch on is artificial men, sex toys, porn hub, whatever. Masturbation of some type has become so mainstream that they are selling sex toys in Walmart. So it may be taboo to talk about it in ministry, but it's not taboo out there in society. So we're going to talk very briefly about sex toys. It's going to be real hard for a husband to find you when you got a husband in your drawer, your closet your medicine cabinet, your wherever your sex toy lives. You have replaced the man with the toy. You have replaced the emotional intimate bond that you should have with the husband and the husband only with the videos, the OnlyFans, the porn hub, the toys, the imagination, the imaginary lovers. And in doing these practices, and I'm not going to go deep into this, into this workshop. This will be a whole different workshop later. But in the process of this, you have invited in spiritual husbands. Spirits designed just for that. This is their goal. To get into your mind, your body, through your open portals, 
And we all know, if we just want to be honest, that at the heightened sense of ecstasy, your mind is definitely not on prayer, protection, or anything. You're just all open. What enters in then controls. You wonder why you're having strange thoughts. You're wondering why you feel like you need to masturbate all the time. You're wondering why you're more and more attracted to porn. Because see, when we talk about it, we make it like the porn is just the men. They're addicted to pornography. They're addicted to masturbation. They're nasty, cheaters, women. Let's be real. We do it too. Let's be extremely honest and transparent with our own selves. That we fantasize, we watch, we look at pictures, we do all kinds of stuff. We are not innocent in all of this. Because the men wouldn't have anything to watch if we were innocent. Because most of them are watching videos of women masturbating, etc. So there's a balance to this. But you are marrying your virtual man, which leaves no room for your true husband. Take a second and really think about what I'm saying. You got to let some of this stuff go. You have to let some of these things go in order to make room for your husband to be your husband. Because whether it's a physical person or your battery operated toy, it is still considered infidelity. If you're still hiding and using these things while he's going to work, going to the meeting, going bowling or whatever. We have to allow ourselves the time, the healing, to let go of our secret addictions, our secret situations, in order to have room for the Father to send him in. Because always keep in mind, if your hands are empty, you can put some in them. If your hands are full, nothing else will fit. The other thing is, women, a lot of us have come from environments where we were taught the P is power. And when I say the P, I don't mean prayer. We've been taught that the P is power. It's really not, but we've been taught that. And so we think that when we're in a relationship, in a marriage, that if he didn't buy flowers, I'm just not going to give him none. If he didn't wash my car this week, I'm just not going to give him none. Uh, He worked overtime and didn't spend time with me. I'm not going to give him none. I'm just mad because I'm mad and I'm going to shut down and not give him one. Well, I want to look at that from a scriptural basis. Because once you get this husband and you become a wife, part of being a wife is having sex. And so in some places they twisted, the woman's body belongs to the man. Actually, scripture says the man's body belongs to the woman. And the woman's body belongs to the man. The two come together and become one. So in essence, they're two beings that have become one being. 
So let's take a quick look. We see in 1 Corinthians 7, 4 through 6. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also, the husband hath not power over his own body, but the wife. So this isn't one-sided. This is balanced. This is balanced out. It says, defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Doesn't say anything about I'm angry. Doesn't say anything about I thought he was cheating. Doesn't say anything about he spends too much time with his homeboys. Doesn't say anything about he got sick, missed a few hours, his check wasn't right. It says, with consent, for a time that you may give yourselves to fast and pray. So that's just not us women. That's them too. We should be openly discussing sex, emotions, relationships. And when we feel like we need time to go off and fast and pray, whether we're doing it as a couple or doing it individually, we need to come together and say, hey, I'm taking this week. And agree that that's a good time. So that your partner is not tempted by the enemy because of your incontinence. So let's talk about that a little. You may be saying, it's my body and I'm independent and I'm just not going to give him none then clearly understand that whatever you're not doing as a wife, the enemy will tempt him with someone else to do it. And while you're pointing fingers at him, please understand that the same thing can and will happen to you. Brains on the just and the unjust. Trust and believe that the enemy will walk, walk men around in front of you just what just your perfect kind you like. They're going to talk right. They're going to move right. They're going to smell right. To try to get you to cheat on your husband. He's not the only one going through this temptation. You will at some point also. And any women watching right now that really wanted to be honest can definitely comment. Because I'll be the first to say, as soon as I got married, men started calling my phone I hadn't talked to in years, in my inbox, text messaging me. All of a sudden, everybody had a renewed interest in Precious. I ain't seen you in a while. Oh, you looking good. Oh. You look at thick. Oh. 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 Hold on, partner. Where, what? I didn't like you then. I don't like you now. Oh, I got a new car. I got a new house. I got a new job. Oh, I finished school. Awesome. Awesome. Unfortunately, a little too late. But there have been some that I will admit was fine, fine. That I had to actually pray. Father, please work this thing out. Because I'm human and I love my husband unconditionally. But I'm human. Whoa. <laughs> So if it happens to us and it happens to them, the father has already given us the solution that if you want to avoid falling victim to the temptation, then you need to come together. You need to come together. You need to not deny each other sex. 
love, walks along the beach, walks in the park, dinner dates, dancing. You need to be one. So that when the enemy sends something by, you're connected enough, you're tied in enough to resist. But if he's having the hormonal pains of not having any in 30 days, right, wrong, or indifferent, what do we think is going to happen? And vice versa. So while you're waiting for the husband, mentally prepare yourself the sex is part of marriage. Also mentally prepare yourself that as you get older, the frequency, the consistency of the sex is going to drop. Keep in mind that blood pressure pills, heart pills, a lot of pills will hinder the function. You got to be mentally prepared for all of this. Because even though sex is an important part, Sex isn't the only part. So you have to be prepared for when you need it and when you don't, because life goes through changes. You have to understand that if you have a plastic husband in the drawer, that it's going to be hard pressed for a husband to find you because there's no room in your hands for him. Your hands are full. If you spend most of your time on dating sites, what are they, um, Plenty of Fish and um, the Swipey one and all this other stuff, then it's hard to find you because you're not in your place of being a jewel. You're over here looking for some fun. So we just have to be real with ourselves. Some of us uh, are more active than others. Some of us have higher drives than others. So everybody's situation will not be exactly the same. But all of us have a situation that we need to look at, understand, and begin to prepare to bring someone else into this situation. Because when he sends him, these are discussions you guys need to have. What are you into? What are you not? What is okay? What is not? What do you do and what do you not do? You have to discuss these things to avoid it being a blow up later on in the relationship. I thank you so much for tuning in. I am Precious Swain Peaks, overseer of New Visions Ministries of Florida. I encourage you to allow yourself healing mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I encourage you to remember your worth and your value. And I pray that the Most High keep you and protect you. Until the next session.